guys, we're behind the scenes of this webcast. Is that webcast? Jesus, not that webcast. Super excited. Of webcast. This podcast. podcast. Wow, this is not it. Find yourself a podcast. Take one. All right. Oh, hello, guys. Wow. <laughs> Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> hey guys, so welcome back to well, welcome to Finding yes. Yourself Podcast. I'm Abby, and I'm here with Isaac. Pleasure being here. Thank I you. I'm so excited and so nervous about interviewing you because this is probably a rebrand of my podcast called Finding Yourself Podcast. And maybe what is it about? Finding Yourself Podcast is a podcast basically that I felt from God to rebrand. It used to be Tough Skin, a podcast where we would interview people about what they got to get Tough Skin. But Finding Yourself Podcast is maybe another interview-based podcast, but it's more or less finding yourself through God, finding yourself through your relationships, finding yourself through everything. To, you have been in my heart to interview you about finding yourself through evangelism. And I'm I, so excited. First of all, I just want to say thank you for having me. I want to honor you, not just here, but like in front of the people that are going to be listening and watching later. This girl is awesome. Like You just have such an integrity when you're on and off the stage or with or without people. You're the same person, and I honor that about you. For real. That, it's a privilege. I was like, honor. is she gonna grab my? <laughs> it's an honor being here for real. I'm, I'm just so excited. Oh, thank you so much. That really means a lot because I, I don't know. I just get so nervous because like I love people and I love like all of you guys. Let's so go, let's go. It was just such a great day. Honestly, like we, we got each other. I picked you guys up and then we had some pizza. So it was good. It was good, right? <laughs> I love Papa John's. Not sponsored. <laughs> Not sponsored, but sponsored. But yeah, so we're so excited to start this interview. So if you guys are excited, you know, you guys can't comment down below. You guys can on YouTube, but rate the podcast. So this five is star. five stars. Give us five stars. It's going to be dope. So why evangelism? Why evangelism? Oh, that question. <laughs> oh, my God. I know a bunch of people, the fans wanted, the people want to know. Okay, so basically, I guess, like, a, before we even start, a little bit about you. From what I've seen, you started on social media when you were, what was it, 15? 15, yes, yes. 14, 15. 15, guys, 15 years old. And literally this many, like, followers, and you started on stories just going out and evangelizing and going out to people on the streets and just sharing the gospel everywhere you go and even starting um like tiktok series of skits about jesus and just making jesus fun again and bringing jesus to the internet so i'm gonna ask you about that story in a little bit but the first of all i just wanted to like tell you guys a little bit about him you guys can follow him on his instagram we'll plug him later but the first of all like why evangelism? Why evangelism? Number one, it's the heart of God. Yeah. That's what I can say. And I know like that sounds like a cliche thing, but really, that's the heart of God. And I know we talk about it. Like, really think about it. God, like, God's heart is people. And if you really think about it, like, oh, I'm, re I'm ready to go in. Oh, I'm ready. Uh, yeah, like, I'm ready. <laughs> like, evangelism is the heart of God. And people need to understand that, you know, everything that God does has to do with people. God's vision is people-centered. You know, the cross, he wanted to save people. He wants to deliver people. He wants to heal people, people, people. So everything God does is for people. Yeah. So and, and I like saying this. Evangelism is a byproduct from your relationship with God. It's a fruit from your relationship with God. And why is that? When you develop a relationship with God, you start to love what he loves and hate what he hates. Yeah. You know, God hates sin, but he loves people. So you will love people. So loving Jesus produces loving souls. And from that place, like, oh, my God, like, how can I not love people, you know? And I don't know. I, like, I can't really describe it or put it into words, but it's just I'm so in love with people. And, and just think about it. And I just love, but there's a reality called heaven and hell. Yeah. And hell is a real place. Everyone you walk past by, me, you, everyone that we walk past by in, in our daily lives have a soul and they're either going two places, heaven or hell. And just to keep that in like, mind and you could just speak to someone and God can use you to change their destiny forever. How can you keep your mouth shut? So people ask me, why evangelism? Why not? You know? <laughs> Yo, that's so true. And I think also being even in a young age, I guess, 
can you talk to me about the first time that you evangelized? What were you feeling? Oh like, God. what happened? Wow. One of my first times. Okay. This is crazy. So I remember my beginning, like my beginning in in high school, just evangelizing in school. It's so funny because people see the glory, but they don't see story. the story. No, they, <laughs> they don't. Like, I remember going up to, like, this might sound mean, but I first started going up to nerds because <laughs> I was too really? scared to talk to other people. So I remember I used to just go up to kids that sit by themselves and lunch, sit by themselves and lunch, and I used to be like, yo, uh, Jesus loves you. That's how what, that's what I would do. Yeah. And I would stutter, and I would like, and it's funny because like, I would mess up so much times, but that's why I learned. And people don't see Was this. it in school? Yes. Mm. And people like, people see that, but people don't see when I was practicing the salvation prayer in a mirror in the bathroom. Stop. They don't see that. You know, and I just feel like it's a for me, it was a process. Yeah. I was not like Peter, where I woke up and I won 5,000 souls. And <laughs> now, like, good morning, me. souls <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> woke up like standing up. No, that, that's how I did not start like that. Yeah. You know, it was such a process for me and just learning and having fun as well, and also like stepping out of my comfort zone. How did you make it fun? How did I make it fun? Oh yeah. my god, I love this question. <laughs> Evangelism is fun. Number one, you're winning souls, not just winning souls, but. Oh, okay. oh, oh, there's so much I want to get into. I know. Don't worry, we got okay, time. Okay, so <laughs> when I look at evangelism, I don't look at it as just, pre yes, evangelism is preaching the gospel, the good news of Jesus, but I see it as just, you know, just connecting with someone, yeah. just talking with them. You know, I see people, like, they make it so religious. Hey, you know, God so loved the world, and then, you know, yes, that's the Bible, we preach that, but be yourself. And that's something I learned through evangelism, just to be yourself yeah. i remember going up to kids and be like yo i like your shoes bro what you got them from oh full locker thank you bro I was like, yeah man one more thing god loves you and just from there like and it's just a simple god loves you exactly it's not even a this is what i feel from the lord it's just god loves you and god's saying this over your life yes. like i feel like there were like i used to evangelize back in the day in miami dade and i used to go up to people and i would just say like hey your outfit's super cute and yes, like breaking the that. ice you know breaking the ice and just being like your outfit's so nice and then all of a sudden just giving them a word of knowledge or just praying for them and just saying hey there's a reality heaven or hell you know jesus loves you and you know there's this place that you to receive jesus and it's the best decision that you can ever make because i feel mm -hmm. like people can do like signs miracles and wonders but when it becomes that relationship with god that is something that this world needs yes you this know? world's looking for love everybody yeah. you and me everyone in this world is looking for love but most of them are looking for love in the wrong places mm. but we have the privilege to not just not just talk but demonstrate the love of god yeah. And I love that. You know, oh, this is so powerful. Okay. I remember I was reading the book of Acts and God revealed this to me. I was like, God, I want to walk in supernatural power. I want to walk in miracles. And all those things are amazing. Those are powerful. Yes, we believe in that. We walk in that. I remember God told me, when you walk in the love of God, you are walking in the supernatural wow. because the love of God is supernatural. And that blew <laughs> my mind. That's crazy. And I was like, wow. So when you show God's unconditional love, what is what does that look like? I remember just calling on calling on friends from school just to check up on them. They're like, "Yo, this is weird. Why are you doing this?" And people don't they don't receive that because you, know, you exactly. randomly talk to someone and you're like, "Hey, how are you?" Yeah, what do you want? They're expecting what do you want or what do you need? And when you just say, "Oh, I just want to see if you're okay," exactly. People, we don't do that nowadays. That's right. It's hard. And just like. I remember I was out with these friends from school and I paid for some other things and they were like in shock. They're like, okay, like, what do you want us to do? Like, no, I just wanted to pay for you because I love you, bro. And they're like, just just the love of God being demonstrated and something I love that Minister Wool said, this is one of the most effective ways to evangelize is through your lifestyle and your example. Oh. Man, your life preaches to people. I love that. Oof. And I just think like who you are off and off the altar, like, in reality, it doesn't even matter if your altar is at school or friendships or if you're preaching at church, it doesn't matter. But as long as your testimony reflects who God is, yes, I feel like that's another way of evangelism that someone sees who you are as a person and they're like, dang, Isaac is the same on and off camera. You know, Abby is the same on and off camera that who you are portrays God. And I feel like yes, walk, yes. like walking with God is a lifestyle and Thank it's you. an everyday thing like i remember another preacher back in the day he would be like it's as you go it's yes. not 
you don't clock in mm, to evangelize. On, on. You don't like, okay, I'm going to evangelize from like mm. this time to this time. It's an everyday thing. And it's everywhere you go, like you have to preach the gospel. You have to, you know, acknowledge people. Whether you're driving to Starbucks or you're walking to the, the metro That's or right. taking that, like there's people everywhere. And I remember another preacher said this once too. I'm just like, there's like, come before on, I forget. On, hey. But <laughs> there was another preacher who said that every single person that you see could be possibly walking into hell like if you see like that fire like around them and i remember when they said that it really marked me because there's a lot of people that need jesus and there's a lot of people that need the love of god and that the fact that we're the vessels that are used to be used for god you know i love that so much evangelism is not an event it's a lifestyle and let me let me say this (laughs) let me say this oh my god i love this verse this is gonna blow your mind Acts 1 8, one of my favorite Bible verses about evangelism. That's so crazy. I was thinking, I'm like, what? I For wanted real? to ask you a verse. Like, what's your okay, verse that you This put? is the verse. Okay, Acts 1 8, I want you to write it down, study it. Jesus said this to his disciples. He said, When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power and you will be my witnesses. Oh my God. You guys ready? Yeah. Notice how Jesus said, You will be my witnesses. He never said you would do witnessing. He said you will be it. So that it's when I look at it, when I look at evangelism, I don't look at it as something I do. It's who I am. Wow. Evangelism is a part of me. It's in my blood. It's it's as now. Oh God, no! Evangelism is a part of me. Yeah. It's a lifestyle, and I'm not I'm not saying that because it sounds cute, but really, like you said, just in Walmart. Hey, God bless you. Can I pay for your groceries? Just simple things like that. Just yeah. showing the love of God. Just and it's not a burden. It's a blessing and it's an honor. To just just to be a, like the Bible says, to be the light of the world, yeah. to be the salt. You know, people should look at your life and notice a difference. Mm, that's good. And I feel like I feel like a lot of people have fear mm. when it comes to evangelism. So, is there anything, <clears throat> any advice that you had or an experience that you had that you had fear? Because I think for me, maybe the one of the first times I went evangelizing. I was like 14, 15, and we went to Dolphin Mall, and they were like, oh, you know, we're going to pray, you know, praying tongues, like, show the machine, like, I'm <laughs> like I'm ready to evangelize, we're going around and around in the car, I was so hype and so ready to evangelize, and basically what happened is that when I got out there to Dolphin Mall, everybody else went evangelizing, and my mouth was shut. Mm. I was like so hype in the moment, but then when I got there, mm. like this fear came over me and I wanted to go to people. I wanted to evangelize to them, but something stopped me. And I know that that was fear now. And how I how I got over it is I practiced. You know, Come I on, went right. evangelizing. I went out. I sat with people, just talking to them, building conversations. And before getting really bold, like, because like us girls were kind of a little like less, you know, with guys were like, okay, like, forget it I could talk to you but like for girls is a little bit harder in that aspect because you get intimidated but um practice it's like a muscle but how, yes. how did you overcome that fear man fear number one I literally had a talk with one of my good friends named Peter Shout out to so Peter. many people <laughs> ask God give me bonus give me bonus give, and that's okay yes keep asking God for bonus but what I feel like we should like should be asking for is more of his love because mm. the bible says perfect love cast out all fear and not just love for people but love for yourself you know so when you, you you can't give something you don't have you know you can't it's hard to love when you're not connected to the source of love okay. so from that place of love i'm gonna be real like of course sometimes we get nervous and that's okay you know but fear like i know his love and i know his love for me towards me and towards people so from that place like it's so easy, you know, it's like, it's not because of me or because of my giftings, it's just his love, like, I don't know when his love, once yeah. God's love becomes your greatest reality, it's impossible to keep your mouth shut, it's impossible, it's, really good. it's impossible to keep your mouth shut, like, once God's love becomes more real than the air that you breathe, yeah. I don't, you can't keep your mouth shut, you can't, I can't keep Jesus to myself, it's impossible, <laughs> And and I guess like going with that, based on intimacy with God, does oh, yes. like does your does evangelism come from your intimacy with God? Heck yes, yes. And I want to share a quick Bible verse on that. I, I love, love the, the word. The word. <laughs> this verse. Oh my goodness! Right here, Acts four thirteen. I'm gonna read it amplified version. So just to give you some context, so this is Peter and John. They got arrested for preaching the gospel. 
and they stood before the council. And I'm going to read this to you. Now, when the men, Jewish high court, saw the, com- oh, watch this. When they saw the confidence and boldness of Peter and John, they grasped the fact that they were uneducated and untrained ordinary men. They were astounded. We'll check this part. And they began to recognize that they had been with Jesus. Wow. Being with Jesus produces boldness. So your relationship with God is what produces boldness. So, like I said earlier, when you develop a relationship with God, what he loves, automatically you will love. And you will go laughter. His heart will become your heart. And, like, this is just so beautiful because you talked about fear, right? Yeah. And fear comes from not knowing who you are. Mm. So, Oof. so look, when, when you have a relationship with God, knowing God produces knowing who you are. And remember this, you operate from who you are. And people, you probably heard this, you're not what people think, you're not what, uh, you know, other people or social media, you are what God says you are. There's actually a half truth. You actually, this is the truth. You are who you think you are. And you best, you better make that person God. Because if you think you are what people think you are, that's who you'll become. If you think you're trash, you're going to operate trash. If you think you're ugly, guess what? You're going to, you're going to operate from being ugly. But when you know that you are a daughter, a son of God, when you know that you are loved by your father, that you are his beloved, you're unstoppable. So that's why, like, people talk to me a lot about evangelism, but I always point them back to the presence. Yeah. Because you can, that's where it comes from. You can't talk about someone you don't know. Let me just say that. Yeah. You can't talk about someone you don't know. You can't preach about someone you don't know. You can't preach the word if you don't know the word. So I encourage people. People ask me, I want evangelism tips. What do you have? Go to his presence. Know God. Know him for yourself. Know him before you can preach about him. And like, just from that place of intimacy, your evangelism will reflect your intimacy with God. Wow. It's so easy to talk about him. Like, what's one of your, who's one of your closest friends? I would say Priscilla. Priscilla. Shout out to Priscilla. <laughs> like you probably know her for her food, what clothing brand she likes, what she doesn't like. Yeah. You know, and let's say you met a random guy on the street today. You don't know him. You probably know his, like, his name, that's it. But you know Priscilla, so you can go around people. You could go around people and talk about her. It's mm. easy because you know her. And this is the you same have that with relationship. God. You have that relationship. That's why I tell people, from that place of intimacy, from that place of knowing God for yourself, it just flows. Yeah. Evangelism is a, f- that's why I say it. Evangelism is a fruit from your relationship with God. Wow. Look at fruit. You don't strive for fruit. Fruit comes naturally. So when you are rooted in his presence, evangelism will come naturally. Yeah. Dang. That's what I say. Like <laughs> I was like, I'm like, <laughs> text some seven nine some. No, like for yeah. real. Oh my gosh, it's just him. Man. And I guess, um, what would be your? Okay, I guess something that you said that marked me from before. You said evangelism is who you are, mm-hmm. and everything steams from your relationship with God. How? How did you? F- how are you finding who you are? Like finding yourself. I love this. Through evangelism, like it could be through evangelism, but even like in that, I guess, yeah. So, about identity, this is such a big thing. Even in the church, some people don't know who they are, Mm -hmm. you know. So, if you want to know who you are, shout out to your mamas, but (laughs) look, if you really want to know who you are, you got to know the you got to know the one who created you. There's so many people looking for identity and what they do and how much Instagram followers you got yeah. or, or how nice my butt is, how tall. Bro, that your value doesn't come from what you do, from how you look, from how big your butt is or none of that. Your value comes from who you are. Yeah. And if you really want to find out who you are, you got to know God because he's the one that created you. He's the one that made you. He's the one that knows you. He's the one, he knows us more than we know ourselves. Wow. So that's why I really say knowing God produces knowing who you are. Because he's the one that made you. He knows us. You know, and we're looking for identity. And it's so sad because I see so many people, so many, especially this generation, trying to find their value and their identity in things like in Instagram followers yeah. and how they dress or, or their status. But our identity or value doesn't come from that. It comes from him. It comes from the word of God. It comes from what God says. Yeah. And that's, that's what I can say about identity, that we're not what we do, but we are who we are. I mean, we are who he says we are. Oh, that's really good. So how do you encourage people to do that, like to build that routine? I think it comes from discipline, right? Heck yeah. But let me say this. The ba- uh, the Bible says this in Matthew 6, 6. You know, Jesus says, when you pray, go into the secret place. Mm. 
the secret place. Behind shut doors. Come on, exactly. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father who is in the secret place. And what is a secret place? A secret place is your altar. You know, it's a place where you where you intentionally take time out of your day to spend time with God. Yeah. You know? For people that don't know what an altar is, can you explain? An altar is basically a place where you just surrender to God. Maybe look, for me, it's my bedroom. For me, it's my car. <laughs> Some for you, maybe it's your bathroom. You know, I like being it's transparent. <laughs> yeah. I live in a trailer with nine people. It ain't easy, but I want, I, I desire, and I need to spend time with God. So I find whether it's my parents' room or sometimes I even go to the park just to spend time with Him. Mom. You know, just an altar, uh, a secret place is when you intentionally take time out of your day to spend time with God. That's how I would describe it. How do you build a relationship with God? Number one, through prayer. Yeah. And what is prayer? People overcomplicate it, and it's yeah. just, oh, it gets me so angry. Prayer is simply conversation with God. It's just communi- communication with God. It's talking with God. And not just because, I want to say this, many people love talking to God, but they don't like listening. Mm-hmm. And that's something I had to learn. Prayer is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. Yeah. And people need to learn how to listen. So prayer is just a conversation. Like how me and you are talking right now. Like, how's your day going? It's good. It's great. What did you eat today? Pizza. <laughs> me too. So yeah. That's like, you just talk with God. And I'll say number two is just through reading his word. If you want to know his will, you got to read his word. Yeah. Oh, I could write a whole book on why you should read this word. Like his, the word is your weapon. Mm. You know? Ah, just so much stuff. But. Yeah. No, there is. And I, and I definitely think that you constantly find yourself every single day, like, through evangelism and through, like, the fact that... I know that a lot of people are like, oh, you're so young, you're so young. I guess my thing would be not, like, why, but, like, what's, like, yeah, like, what's your why? Like, why did evangelism become such a huge, like, mark in your life? Well, like I said earlier, it's the heart of God. And from my relationship with God, it just came. And it's not, oh, I want to, so I'm so happy you brought this yeah. up. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Lord. Oh, this is so good. I want to break some mindsets out there. Please do. I want to break some mindsets. Yeah. People think evangelism is just for the evangelist. No, that is not biblical yeah. and that is not right. It's like saying prayer is just for the intercessors mm. or worship is just for the worshipers. No, we're all called to pray. We're all called to worship in the same way. We're all called to evangelize. Yeah. People need to understand that. And I'm not this passionate about evangelism because I'm an evangelist or whatever. I just love God and I love the heart of God. And like I said, loving God produces love. But I think people. that's so simple. Like the fact that you love God and you love it's the simple. heart of God. Like I feel like we overcomplicate things. It is. I don't know. You like? Uh, want me to say Wait. some deep revelation? I just love God. <laughs> that's I it. Love that's him. it. My heart belongs to Him. It, that's that's pretty much it. It's like I think something that I love is that God, like the heart of God, is souls. So since the heart of God is souls, we should love what God loves and exactly. hate what he hates. And yes. he loves souls. So if his heartbeat is for souls, my heart going to beat and burst uh, for, for souls. souls. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> oh, and I think that's so beautiful. Honestly, is there any advice or any tips that you have for someone that wants to start evangelism or any advice that maybe, maybe there's someone that like is me that maybe I haven't gone out evangelizing like normal and I want to go evangelize what are some tips that you would give? If you want to go crazy in evangelism, go crazy in the secret place because that's where it all starts. I can give you the best tips. Oh, make sure you have your back. Look, <laughs> you're the secret place. Make sure you know God for yourself and make sure you know your word before you can preach the word. Mm. That's what I'll say. Number two, just do it. <laughs> like Nike, just, just do, do it. it. Stop hesitating. Sponsor Stop. us. Just do it. Number three, be yourself. Be you that God created you to be. Use your personality. You don't got to sound like Billy Graham. You don't got to sound like PJ. Be yourself. And that's another aspect of identity. Mm-hmm. Yes, you're a son of God. You're a daughter of God. But you're also you. I'm Isaac. Yeah, the way I'm I Abby. preach the way I preach is going to be different than the, the way you preach. The yeah, I'll I go up to people sitting down and I'll just be like, hey, how are you? Want to my sandwich? <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, friend. No, but like, just, just be yourself. Have fun, you know? And just from that place, like, if you really want to evangelize and, and go out and share your faith, just just keep seek, just keep pursuing his presence. Just keep knowing him, that intimacy with God. Can we just talk about intima- intimacy? Yes, just please. For like a couple seconds. Like, I'm please. down. Because we're talking about evangelism, and we keep talking about relation. We keep talking about intimacy. What is intimacy? 
Intimacy with God means oneness and closeness. And I want to let people know that are listening to us, God desires a relationship with you. Mm. Christianity was never intended to be a religion. It was intended to be a relationship, relationship. with God. And oh, one of my favorite Bible verses, James 4.8. Oh my gosh, I'm going to put... The Bible says this. I was like, put me on it, please. Draw <laughs> near to God, yeah. and he will draw near to you. Many people know that verse. Oh yeah, I know that. Let me put it into perspective. The creator of the universe, the one that put the stars in their orbit, the one that put, you know, the created the, the the trees, the ocean, yeah. the one that created you and I, the, the God Almighty, the one true living God, hmm. says that if we, us and perfect human beings, draw near, he will draw near to us. What an um, invitation that is so to beautiful. have intimacy with our Father. And the fact that he gives us access to. Oh my gosh. Because the fact that he gives us access, it's like in the Bible, people would get stoned or even if they had one inch of sin on them. And the fact that yeah. we're sinful people, we have a sinful nature and we go that daily to the presence of God and the fact that he gives us the privilege to go to him. I think that it's so beautiful. It's the purpose of the cross yeah. to restore our relationship with him. The Bible says the Son of Man came to seek and save. Yeah. He, oh my! Can't you just hear his heart cry? Yeah. Just people. He came for us. He loved us. He longed for us since the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Since the very beginning with Adam and Eve, he all God wanted is just communion with us. Mm -hmm. All he ever wanted just to have friendship, to have a family. That's all God wanted. So on that cross, I love this because Jesus didn't just die for our sin. He overcame sin yeah. on that cross. You know, on that cross, Jesus was disconnected from the Father so we can have relationship with him. Yeah. On that cross, do you know why Jesus said, why have you abandoned me on that cross? Because he was rejected by the Father wow. so we can be accepted by him. And just that, oh my gosh, everything God did, the cross, the he tore the veil that separated man from his presence. All that just for we can have relationship with him. So people need to understand that God longs for you. He loves you. He wants relationship with you. He wants you to know him, bro. The Bible says that God is a jealous God. Yeah. That's so beautiful. It is. God is not insecure. That's not what that's saying. Oh. He wants to spend he wants your time. Wow. He wants you to spend time with him. He wants to know you. He wants to know your favorite colors. He wants to have a conversation with you. God is a jealous God. Mm -hmm. So people need to understand that God loves you and you actually desires and he burns. He desperately yearns for a relationship with us. Mm -hmm. So we must take that first step. Because the Bible says, draw near to God. Who's doing the first step? We do. And that's another topic which I would love to get into. <laughs> yeah. But I'll give you this little thing. We are the ones that determine our level of hunger for God, mm -hmm. not God. Wow. And there's people that say, God, I want fire. I want passion. And yes, that's amazing. But we are the ones that determine our level of hunger for God, not God. Yeah. So, man. Like you said, yes, sometimes it does take discipline, which is dying to self. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes I don't, I'm going to be real. I don't feel like praying all the time. I don't feel like reading my word, getting up 4 or 5 like in the morning. You don't feel like being holy, like, like I don't feel 24 like, seconds. I don't feel like getting up 5 in the morning before I go to school to pray yeah. sometimes. But I do it. You know why? Because I love God. And love is not a feeling. It's a decision. Mm. And, oh my gosh, last part about, like. That's so good. No, like. Wait, say that again. Love is not, not a, a feeling. feeling. It's, it's a, a decision. decision. Love is a decision. Mm -hmm. And retweet all I that. Love, I so love good. how Paul said this in Philippians 3, my favorite Bible verse, my favorite Bible verse. Apostle Paul, a great leader. He did many exploits for God. He planted churches all around the world. He did, bro, people touched his handkerchief, they got healed. He did many great things. Yeah. Do you know what he said? What? Philippians 3. He said, There is absolutely nothing that can compare to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus. Wow. And he actually said, I count everything else as garbage. In the LNT, the New Living Translation, I count everything else as garbage when compared to knowing God. Wow. Guys, there is nothing like knowing God. Not a, I'm going to speak to the leaders. Not a title, not sitting at the front row, not having a position, not sex, not money, not a nice job, a nice girl. There is nothing. I want you to get this, guys. There is nothing that can satisfy like knowing God. Yeah. And notice how I say it, knowing God. Knowing God. I never said knowing about God because knowing about God, that's religion. Because I feel like a lot of us or like a lot of people, they know about God. Yeah. And, but they don't know God. They don't know him. And that's the constant communication. And that that's intimacy. right. That's right. 
knowing about God, that's just religion, if you think about it. Yeah. But knowing him, that's intimacy. Yeah. And it's just... And actually, like, living it. Because I, yes. like, I feel like a lot of people don't live in that intimacy with mm. God. And they don't live in that relationship. But, like, I have a lot of conviction because sometimes it's... Like, we're busy to the, d- the, d- the day-to-days. Yeah. We have so much going on in our life or whatever. We're serving God. We're loving God. We're here. We're like, God, I, I trust you. But it's that fact of knowing him and acknowledging him in yes. your day-to-day. And that's how you sustain revival mm. with intimacy. That's how you sustain. I grew <laughs> little testimony if you guys can know me. I grew up in church my whole life. Both Same. my parents were pastors. Really? I went on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, <laughs> Sunday, you Sunday, name Monday, it. Tuesday, Wednesday, I went on every day. Like yeah. I know like I grew up in church, but I didn't grow up in his presence. I grew up in wow. church, but I was still lost, you know? And you know those those things never changed me. And I remember going to conferences, oh fire of God. Next week I'm back on a website I should have been on. Hmm. I know how it is to to come out of church on Sunday and on Monday flirting with every girl in yeah. my high school. I know the lifestyle. I was living in shame. I was living in guilt. But my life transformed when I developed a prayer life. Wow. That's when my life completely transformed. In that intimacy with God. In knowing him. The closer you get to Jesus, the farther you get from sin. And mm-hmm. when Jesus is all you desire, every other desire dies out. So wow. from that place of intimacy, from that place of knowing him, nothing else matters. I just want him. Yeah. And I just want his heart. And it's just a simple, th- like, like again, we overcomplicate it. It's a simple so thing simple. of, like, the thing, three things. Going to his presence, reading the word, and being, like, in that community and just being close with him and acknowledging him. I just feel like we stop ourselves. Exactly. From really unlocking the potential of who we are. So true. And the fact that we just need to go to his presence. Run to his arms. That's it. He just wants to hug us. He, oh, he just wants <laughs> he just to embrace wants to, us. He just wants to be like, my daughter, my son, I just want to take care of you. My desire for everyone listening right now, mm-hmm. after this podcast, I just want to provoke you to pursue his presence. Yes. Because in the end of the day, that's all that matters. I love how we're talking about the supernatural. It's amazing. Yeah. I've seen miracles. You know, God used me to, you know, amazing things. What's the point of being used by God if you don't know God? Hmm. Because I don't want to go to Judgment Day. He say, I never knew you. And I don't want to do miracle signs and wonders and just say all of this for him to not let me in those doors. Exactly. What's the point of being used by God if you don't know him? Hmm. I don't want him to say, depart from me. I never knew you. Wow. I never knew you basically means I never had intimacy with you. Wow. So I'd rather, I rather know him than be used by him. Yeah, and even as we're talking, I feel I feel the presence of God. You know, Amen. I feel His presence, and you know, it says in the Word, where two or three are gathered, His presence is there. Yes. Is there anything that you feel like to pray for the people, or you feel like that you want to just encourage them? You know, to maybe after this podcast to go home and or in their room in their car wherever they're listening to seek God. Is there like a prayer Street. or anything yeah. that you feel? I would just say, don't let distractions come. The distractions of the world will rob your hunger for God. I want to remind you guys today, just keep your eyes on Jesus. There is absolutely nothing that can satisfy like him. Nothing, not a title, not a position, not followers on Instagram, not a person, only him. Mm. And I want you to take this time to pray for him. Yeah. Is that cool? Let's do, it. Let's do it. Father God, I just thank you. Thank you for the life, Father, of everyone that's watching or hearing this, God. God, you know exactly what they're going through or what's in their hearts, Father. And God, right now, I just thank you because you are good. And I thank you because you hear us. Father God, right now, I just pray for every person, God, that's dealing with fear. God, right now, I just come against every spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. God, I declare your perfect love to encounter them right now. There it is. God, I just pray, Father, that your love. Holy Spirit, you are the one that makes Jesus our reality. Holy Spirit, you're the one that makes Jesus and his love real. So, Holy Spirit, my best friend, I ask God that you would make your love real to them. That your love will become their greatest reality, Lord. And God, I just pray, Father, that you would just... You would just invade, Father, and that you would encounter them, God, that you would reveal yourself to them, God, not as a tradition or a religion, but as a real person. Father God, I just pray, Lord, that they wouldn't just know about you, but that they would know you. 
So, God, I just cover them with the blood of Jesus. God, I just bless them, Father. I declare peace right now in whatever circumstance or whatever situation they are in. God, I just declare your love and your presence right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. And um, I just feel the same thing for you guys that are watching. I feel that many of you guys maybe are like me, that you haven't evangelized in the longest time and you want to get activated I just want to encourage you guys to go out there and to win souls because just do it. Just do it because souls are the heart of Jesus, and you know it convicts me to just want to go out and just to talk to people and to really like seek the heart of God because His presence is here. You know, go after Him, go after God because He's running after you. You know, like He said, like Isaac said, it's like when you go to the Word and you draw near to Him, He will draw back to you. So if you guys took anything, anything out of this at all, just Run to God. And also, you know? evangelism is a commandment. Mark 6 and 15, Jesus said to go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Wow. And the Bible says, the Bible says this, a fruit of loving God is obedience to him. Wow. So, man, he commanded me <laughs> to do it. Like? <laughs> I love him. And this is hard. I got to go. Yeah. Is there any specific Bible verse that you, that you're like, this is what I want to do in the evangelism? Like a specific Bible verse that comes to mind that hmm. that convicted you or you had an encounter that like you're like, oh, this Bible verse is... I'll just go back to Acts 1-8. Yeah. It's evangelism is not something you do. It's who you are. Hmm. It's a part of me. It's a lifestyle. That's awesome. Human beings, not human doers. Facts. Facts. And I guess one last question. I know it's not about evangelism or intimacy, but how did you get into social media? Social media. Oh, my <laughs> God. So I used to make fun oh of people on social media. God. I should be like, I ain't doing social media. That thing is whack. And I remember God spoke to me literally a year ago from now, December. He said, I want you to post. I said, what do you mean post? I don't do that stuff. He's like, I want you to post. He's like, you know what, whatever. So I went and literally did it. And I don't even know what happened. It just started blowing up. And I just started posting more, being obedient to God, and just, you know, using creativity, using creative ways to evangelize, like and funny skits. And also Those are so through, funny. <laughs> through Instagram lives. And they just started blowing up. And God really, like, put his grace on this and his favor wow. and just obedience and oh my gosh one last thing social media is such a tool yes. we spoke about evangelism right now bro during quarantine we couldn't go out right back then in the bible they had to travel in ships donkeys horses just to preach the gospel to another town yeah. we could pick up a simple smartphone speak to our cameras hey speak to millions of people across the world this is where we're gonna get the millions there's no excuses the Bible said to all creation, to everyone, this is how you could do it, through your phones. So if you got a phone, you got no excuses. Ooh, if you got Instagram, you got no excuses. Come on, somebody. <laughs> and honestly, I feel that people limit themselves on social media because they're like, oh, we need the perfect lighting. We need Bro, the perfect things. We need everything perfect. But you don't. You just need to do it. Just do, you don't need a $40,000 camera and a $50,000 microphone. I'm going to do, do a YouTube, YouTube video on that. You don't need it. You just need your phone. You just need your phone. You need your phone and good lighting, and that's it. So, Simple. point blank, and yeah. So, I'm so thankful for this so time. Happy to be here. Like, I'm really thank grateful. Thank you. No, thank you for <laughs> real. Thank you for having me. Of it means course. so much. Honestly, I feel like I could just like poke you, and the Bible will come out, and it just con it just convinced me. I'm like, wow, God, you know, like, there's just so much hunger. You know, God there's so much cool. hunger I see in you, and like, never lose that passion Amen. for His presence, and never lose that you know humbleness and just being yourself and i think also the way you blew up is because of your heart you know mm. because your heart is so pure and you're so genuine to hear after god and know what he's talking about in your life and you're so um attentive to his word so the fact that you're like that god is blessing you he's blessing you Amen. because you know that is and you know in the future i see you doing even greater things Amen. you know I like that. like it says like from to go from our shoulders up and like to do greater things than he did you know so i definitely feel that there's such that calling and that purpose over as to why you're here in this moment and like i told you off camera that you like you have been in my heart like to do this interview because i feel you like you did it yeah i know because i feel like i feel like there's so much that you have to offer there's so much you have to give and there's so many like so many people here watching are going to receive so much from the word and anything so with that being said where can they follow you official isaac bilbao right there Thank you, but right 
I want people to look at my life and be like, dang, if God can use this young, imperfect dude and he can know God and be used by him, I know he can do it for me. Yeah. So guys, look at my life. I ain't perfect. I remember telling God in like 2020, God, I don't have no gifts. I ain't that good looking. I don't know how to sing. God, I don't, I'm not looking for that. I'm not looking for perfection. I'm looking for someone who's willing. And I remember on my knees, here I am, God. Send me. No. From there on. So God ain't looking for someone perfect. He's looking for someone willing. The question is, are you? You got me speechless. <laughs> so the fact, are you willing? Are you willing, guys? Guys, comment below. Make that decision. If you're willing to seek God an hour, seek God 15 minutes a day, and just really go after him, comment below and just express that to God, you know, and let, let's be accountable to each other. So I'm grateful to have you. Thank you so much fun. for being here. And this is Finding Yourself Podcast. It is a podcast where we're interviewing people and even topic talking about topics that a lot of people don't talk about normally that God put in my heart to talk about. So I'm excited to just start this new journey and start this I'm excited new for thing. you. I love it. Yeah, it's something that God put in my heart. So I definitely like like the worries came away and I just know that um, it's not only for you guys, but it's also for me as well. Just we're always on a journey to finding Amen. ourselves, finding who we are in God. Identity is such a big topic that everybody talks about. So I feel that this podcast is going to bless not only my life, but so many of you guys. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching. Love you guys follow her podcast, <laughs> follow it, subscribe. It's going to be Finding Yourself Podcast on Instagram. We'll be right here. And then you guys can follow me on YouTube. Follow that on life films um on abster 7 on youtube life films for any photography and videography business that you guys need and yeah so cool we'll see you guys next time love you bye